Hi, I'm Harry. I'm Charles. I'm Jack. We are White Lies and we're here to answer some of our fan questions. I've never tried it out myself. But um, no. I've always meant to since because I remember having a chat with this yeah. with this guy after the show, um, and yeah, and thinking I should definitely do that on the next flight. But uh, but apparently the, this this um, theory is that when you when you're like taxiing on the runway and then you when the when the pilot starts to accelerate the plane for takeoff mm. and you put on death, the moment when. When is it? Like the singing starts or when I the song kicks in? I think it must be in? with the first lyric. Yeah, yeah. maybe it is I love when the, the feeling starts. when we lift off and then and that the plane at that the point actually lifts, lifts off. off. Yeah. So in the same way as Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon syncs up with The Wizard of Oz, <laughs> our song syncs up with an easy jet flight to Yeah, food, yeah, exactly. It's pretty badass. Um, I love it. I think it's great. I mean, I'm going to give it a go next yeah. time on a plane. And that's from AJ Clues. That's from AJ Clues, and Mikey Richards has responded to AJ Clues and said, good question. <laughs> Mikey Richards is a Man City fan, judging by his avatar. <laughs> good for you, Mikey. <laughs> um, that's a really good question, actually, though. I think my answer to that would be um, death. I'd agree. Just I think yeah. we'd, str we'd struggle to ever have a set where that didn't have a, have a perfect moment in the set for that song. And I think if our fans knew, that that was the case, like someone had put a gun to our heads and said, you can't play any other songs apart from one on that album, and we didn't choose Death, they'd be really annoyed. I think so, yeah. yeah. I think that's, that's pretty unanimous on that one. Yeah. That's a nice question, because it mainly is saying how nice we are and how good we are. Yeah. I don't Answer think, to that is you can't. Right? I, no. don't, I don't think. You I don't think we envisage anything. Success. No. I think I don't think we ever had a clue what was going to happen, and like not we didn't even understand the process of making an album. No. Really and what what would, like what the schedule would be of when we finished it, like mm. what the process was for getting it out there, and I think we were very fortunate to have lots of people around us who yeah. kind of understood how that all worked and, and pretty much did it did it all for us. <laughs> It's not so much a story behind the album cover. Um, I'll let you all into a secret. When you're trying to do an album cover, usually what happens is a design company sends you loads of really awful album covers <laughs> and you just say no until one looks quite good. Yeah. And that's sort of what happened. I remember there were like images of sort of like clip arts of butterflies and things like that <laughs> and it just was all getting a bit depressing. <laughs> and then all of a sudden we saw this photograph um, which, I'll, which I, th I think we should reveal now that yes. it's been 10 years, that, it, it, that actually there's only two pillars and they're the same in real height. life. It's and, very, and they're the same It's height. a very doctored photograph. It's a very doctored yeah. photograph. Very, there are, there very are, photoshopped. There are two, there are, the original photograph is of two water towers in Death Valley in California. I don't think, no, it's, it's Death, is it Death Valley? It's, I I it's found like, it. No, it's we in like it. Mojave Desert. Death Valley's a little way away from there, but yeah. I thought it was in Death Valley. But anyway, I thought yeah. Was, oh, whatever. Yeah, and we it, have seen them in real life. But it was, but the water towers are used to um, feed flora uh, on the banks of train tracks to stop landslides, because they were getting landslides because the, the ground was too dry, which is cool. Um, yeah. But we, we, yeah, we doctored it and made the, put, put, added an extra pillar and made the third one a bit taller. And I always remember showing it to my dad for the first time and him going, cricket. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, shows how much uh, your dad knows about cricket. <laughs> so stumped like, what? What's the cricket theme? I was like, oh, damn it. <laughs> anyway, it's done well, so, you know, clearly not, not many other people thought of cricket. This is next, the next question comes from a very good name, I think. A singular folded egg. <laughs> <laughs> I like what an this. image. I yeah. like that a lot. There's a guy. <laughs> How do you fold it? So you fry the egg first I mean, and then it fold it, it once. It. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's, it's, it's so good having a good, good social media handle. Yeah. There's a guy I think follows us called like Moldy Farts, <laughs> which, I, which I really enjoy as well. Uh, Every time I see that, yeah. it brings a smile. We listen. I know we listen to a lot of Scott Walker actually. Yeah. And I think it was. Um, what's that song? 
It's that one like it's raining today mm. or whatever it's called. Yeah. How does what's that song called? It's Is raining it? today. It's raining today. today. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Um, bit, yeah. Bit I think we that, listen we listen to that a lot. A bit Morricone because we're yeah. doing a lot of the Morricone and the guitars. Yeah. Um, and I think as well, I remember I remember saying to Ed, you know, about the strings and stuff. Like I was I was a big fan of Smashing Pumpkins growing up and of like met the melancholy album and the strings especially the strings at the end of price of love are very um, yeah buttery in the same kind of dramatic way as as, uh, as melancholy so there was a bit of that and yeah it's almost as if every section of that song was inspired by something different and that's like what you're saying before it has so many different kind of scenes um it's almost like yeah four four different songs that we've just just about managed to glue together in the yeah in a, in a suitable way The answer is not that close. <laughs> really? Not close. Yeah, it was. It was always going to be a B side, I think. Yeah. But that was. Those are the days when you had B sides, proper B sides, yeah. and we actually put in a lot of work on that song to, to to finish it at least. And I think that that's work that we wouldn't do now. Yeah. Like we had a song that's almost going to make it on the album. In fact, there was like three tracks that almost made it onto five, and then we just didn't. The, we just didn't do them. I can think of like a, a comedy answer and an honest answer. Yeah, I mean that. the comedy answer would be I'd, I'd love to hear like some death metal covers of, mm. of, yeah. of those songs. Or the Chili Peppers. Chili Peppers, Chili Peppers covers. <laughs> right. um, um, my, my genuine answer to that, I think of a current band, a band who I know like White Lies, which is few and far between, uh, is Blossoms, who really like White Lies. And in fact, one of the, Charlie, the bass player, once told me that, uh, that they started a band they started Blossoms after him and Tom, the singer, or him and one of the other ones from the band, uh, coming to White Light Show and mm -hmm. having such a good time and thinking, oh, I'll, have bit, I'll, I'll have a bit of that, I could yeah. write better songs than these mugs. Yeah. And um, that's what they did. I know, I know what my answer would be. What would it be? Go, I'd like to get, like, that time in Siberia, yeah. we, made, exactly we made the video. Exactly the same. That's what came yeah. to Because it's so, so bonkers yeah. that we yeah. went there and that we like we just got it together to go to Siberia and make yeah. a music video. And while we were there, we found out the album was, was at number one in the charts. Yeah. Which was, an incredibly which was so surreal. Surreal memory. So like doing like interviews with Radio 1. Yeah, you were talking to we're, Reggie Yates. Yeah, uh, Reggie whilst, Yates. Yeah. Whilst you were in the middle yeah. of Do you know what else was really great, I think, in that era as well, was the first time when we went to New York for the first time and like we weren't allowed, we were underage and we couldn't really get into like any yeah. bars. But yeah. We just had the, the best time getting like, snuck, into, snuck places. into loads of clubs and yeah. bars was when New York was still really Popping. happening and fun. Yeah. And like I remember that being, and in LA as well actually, it was yeah. the first time in America properly. Yeah. And it was just, it felt, definitely felt like we'd, yeah, we were doing good. Yeah. It was good fun. Probably something like Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> um, good, <laughs> but flawed. Yeah. Uh, and you probably enjoy it more when you're a teenager. Yeah. That's what I reckon. What else? But also, I do still love that film. So. I remember, I remember not really knowing what to expect at start line and, and being kind of like a rabbit in the headlights. and. Um, I think we were very excited to go to Brussels to, to um, uh, what's it called? ICP. ICP. ICP, that's it. I see the studio that we made that album in. And um, I think one of my memories from that um, recording session was that there was a fridge outside the recording studio that was stocked full of beer. And we were just merrily drinking them the whole time. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> 10 beers a day and then to the end of the session we got a bill sent through for all yeah. those. we thought they were all free and they were like six euros each or yes something. outrageous um that so was that was always a good that's a good memory for me like and like having a lot of fun in in kind of because you know at the beginning of every session like there's a lot of downtime for anyone who's not playing drums basically yeah so playing a lot of pool play like messing around on the they had loads of like they had like an xbox there or something and yeah. we used to play video games a lot and i remember a lot of video game playing and yeah. one of my favorite memories was um we all kind of like took a game each 
because they have they were like they had an X. No, they had a PlayStation Three, I guess. Yeah. And they were like there were a few games, and you were playing like a racing game yeah. a lot. And I was playing that Drake's Fortune game, which I loved. And Jack was playing um, Assassin's Creed, the first one. Yeah. And I, re I remember so vividly, and it really made me laugh, when I, I was watching Jack play at one point. And Jack's just like riding around on a horse in a market or something. I love and, our, and our producer, Max, who was a big gamer as well, <laughs> comes into the room, <laughs> like having been recording, and yeah. he's just like, whoa, 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 whoa. How'd you get on a horse? <laughs> Jack's like, tap Y, just tap Y. And he was like, I walked to Damascus the other day. It took like two and a half hours. So this will take too long, Daryl Taylor, but I think we can pick one each because it's very hard to pick your top three albums because it changes constantly. But um, I would pick one album, I would, I would say, uh, the Spirit of Evening by Talk Talk. That would be my choice. Yeah, that's a good choice. I could pick three that would be in my top, like top ten for sure, and that would be, I love a record called The Far East Suite by Duke Ellington um, as a jazz choice. I love a record called Hats by The Blue Nile. That would be in there. Um, and I would probably have to throw uh, Stop Making Sense, the, the Talking Heads live album. I think it's the best the best thing they've done and have to offer. I'm going to go so left field here, I'm afraid. But, um, Is it going to be bark? No, it's going to be it's going to be some metal. Oh, all right. Um, there's this uh, there's a French, I guess a death metal band, Blutus Nord. Just one guy. Just one guy. Well, I think they have revolving. One he guy, has revolving band members, but maybe. Yeah, but I don't think he performs no. live. No, I don't. I, I think, think he. he just does I think very himself. rarely. Yeah. yeah. But um, and he's a mystery. It, it would be that. Um, I think it's called. Um, I can never, I've never pronounced a memory of Vistora, and it's like one of those albums, but it's called like yeah. Saturnian Poetry. Yeah. And, um, Sounds chill. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not, a, like, and I think if you're not a fan of metal, mm, you don't could bother. still, no, and don't, don't bother, like, I think you could definitely still give it a go, and I think you just have to, like, really, like, persevere with it a little, little bit. But I find it so deep and complex, that album, and it's, it just, I just find it so satisfying to listen to, and I think it's, I think it's a great piece of work. A, an inspirational road story, which is also still quite funny, from this last tour that we did, because uh, and Harry's going to say that he saved a man's life. Oh, here we I go. I did yeah. save yeah. a man's didn't life. Save a man's yeah. Life. Uh, our beautiful, wonderful lighting tech Matt uh, went out on. He's he's well known for his ability to to drink until he can no longer move. And, he loves uh, to really take in a city. He takes yeah. in a city in the proper yeah. in the proper Irish bar manner. Yeah. yeah. And. Um, he he had a huge night one night, it was a huge night. Aarhus, wasn't it? It was Aarhus, yeah, yeah in Denmark. And we got on the bus. Um, no, we were no, at, we had a show. Yeah. Had, had a show we the next had day. Had a show the next day, yeah. And he was saying he felt awful. And we were like, our tour manager was like, Matt, you've been out all night. Of course you feel awful. Yeah. And he was like, oh, no, I feel really bad. <laughs> oh, my, my stomach hurts. That's how he talks. <laughs> and, um, and eventually, Harry said, oh, do you think you've burst your appendix. Yeah. Do you think that maybe it's more than just a dreadful hangover after yeah. complaining about it for like 12 hours? Yeah. And eventually we sent him well, to a hospital. No, we what happened did, was we... Hans was Hans was saying, no, he's just got a hangover. He's just being a, just being a pussy, basically. He's yeah. Not, he's not, he's, uh, yeah, he's just lost it. Yeah. And I said to Hans, that, no, Hans, I think he's, I think he's actually ill. Like, you need to get book him a doctor tomorrow morning to come to the venue. Yeah. And Hans did do that gradually, but only because I asked him. Yeah. Because well, I'm, 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 I'm effectively his boss, yeah. So I can. <laughs> and then the doctor saw Matt, and like within two minutes went, "No, oh, you got to go to hospital. Yeah, you're you're, you're not well." Yeah. And he went to hospital, and he had he did have appendicitis, and he had yeah. it out. and he had he had it out that same day. And he got picked up by our tour bus at the after hospital, four a.m. at four a.m. Yeah. in Copenhagen hospital. Got back on the bus, and did the, did the show the next day. We yeah. flew in a lighting guy for one show. The Rich, who was a hero, to do it. So we've had a lot of people asking online whether yeah. we're going to reissue To Lose My Life, the album, on vinyl or CD. People have been asking that for years, actually. Yeah, years and years, and it's very valuable. So the answer is...
No. No. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking crazy. Do you know how expensive that would be? No. <laughs> Sadly not.